Greetings, consciousness. So I thought this would be a perfect podcast to put out before we take this short break. And that is one thing I don't think we have discussed thoroughly on this platform. And that is the Ouroboros. The Ouroboros. The serpent swallowing its tail. That is the Ouroboros. Now when we go through the Bible or Buddhism or Christianity or Kemetism in ancient Kemet we find serpents all over the place. It is interesting because we as human beings since Genesis we are all scared of the serpent. Yet the serpent is all over the place both in the Bible and in the Kemetic teachings and in Buddhism. You are told be as wise as serpents and yet be as humble as a dove. When we study the Egyptian school of thought, we know there's a bird on the forehead and a serpent. Moses lifted up the serpent. The reason for this is, this is the creative power in the universe. The Ouroboros is sometimes painted as an O, like zero, O. Most of us, when we count, we say one, two, three. Very rarely we say zero, one, two, three. But in mysticism, when you say zero, you are talking about the absolute the I before manifestation. Once you say zero, one, the one means duality, becoming. The source of all life has become something. Our times we see the Ouroboros as you are looking at in this depiction on a podcast written as a number eight. Number eight represents the infinity. Infinity of the universe. Infinity of your being. No one has ever reached the end of the universe. And you are also eternal. There is no end to you. You come into manifestation and you return back to source. Number eight represents the Divine Mother. Those of you who have studied the Egyptian mythology, you will always notice behind Osiris is the Divine Mother. Osiris has been now on the Tree of Life or Jehovah is number seven, the seventh planet. The furthest planet, that which represents death and reincarnation. But the Divine Mother is number eight, the eighth zone, which is the womb of all of us, the universal womb. And so this serpent. Or serpents all over spirituality. It's a very profound mystery of man because they represent the Kundalini force. In Exodus, they said, God asked Moses, What is that in your hand? As if God couldn't see what Moses is holding. It's like me sitting 
before my table and God asking me, what is that behind you or in front of you? Rather, yet this being can see everything. And of course, in the story they said, Moses replied, his staff. And the staff, of course, when it was thrown down, became a serpent. And he picked it up by the tail. The Ouroboros is eating its own tail. The Kundalini energy descends. Kundalini energy rises upwards. And so this staff in the hand of Moses, we see all the Kemetic gods at times holding their staff. David had a staff. Abraham had a staff. Jesus had a staff. Moses had a staff. So this staff is symbolic because it represents your spine. And so when the Kemetic masters held a staff, it represented something more powerful than you know. Your own spinal column with the Kundalini force, yin and yang. The two witnesses in the book of Revelation. And therefore, I thought the Ouroboros is a very important subject to also bring to your minds for you to understand the real meaning behind the serpent. You must never run away from serpents. When you read the Bible, because the serpents are not here to harm you. It is a force within you. And so Aaron's staff was thrown down before Pharaoh. It, Pharaoh's magician's serpents. Because you have one positive and one negative. And Moses, who represents the sun, an awakened being, will be able to destroy the ego. Before any one of us can return back to source, we must destroy the ego. That is our job. And when we talk about uh, meditation and transmutation and stuff like this, it is for those who want to follow the mystical path. It's not for everybody. Those who want to tap into the power of the universe or know their true self before they lay down the physical body, those are the ones that go into initiation and vow never to live according to their lower self. And that is why I keep saying to people, they are fooling themselves in these religions, going for baptism when they are not ready. You have to be absolutely sure you want to start messing with the inner power not external power but inner power this path all the mystics of the ancient world followed and at your own time or in your own time if you choose to follow that path then you must renounce this world they say, no one can serve two masters, nor can you be lukewarm. You are either hot or cold. To enter the womb of the Divine Mother, we must change 
as Jonah was swallowed up in the ocean by the whale as a womb. And he was spat out as a new creature. That is us entering the womb a second time to be given birth to as a new being. That is the meaning of baptism. And so I hope you understand the Ouroboros. Everything is about you. And like I said before, I no longer wish to hold any more meetings. But I do have friends that I would like to see when I'm over there again. And it will be before this year ends. And so do take care of yourselves. Peace.